Okay, let me quickly explain the four color theorem. A graph is a collection of vertices and edges. I'm writing B, E, uh, B is the set of vertices and E the set of edges. Here is an example of a graph. Just draw one. So this is a graph which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices or nodes and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven edges or connections between the nodes. <clears throat> a coloring assigns to every node a number such that adjacent nodes have different numbers. Let's try to color this graph. <clears throat> I put here the number one for the first node, here two, here three. You see for a triangle already we need three colors. Here uh, in this, for this node I can again reuse number one, right, that works. I can here use number two, here I can uh, maybe again use number one, again use number two, Again, use number two here. And you see this graph was, is colored now with three colors. But we can easily modify that graph so that we need more colors. Let me just try to do that. Like, for example, if you put here another node inside this triangle. Now, we cannot use the number one. We cannot use the number two. We cannot use the number three. So we have to use a fourth color here, which is number four, and this graph now has already, needs already four colors. <clears throat> the four color theorem claims that every graph which we can draw in the plane without that edges intersect can be colored with four colors, like this graph here. Uh, you can imagine this graph to become much more complicated and uh, whatever you draw the claim is that we always can color it with four colors. Let's just I extend it this now a little bit let's try to here we can put number three, number two, number three, number one, number three so we have three maybe this is one so we can use two here and I can again use one here so this is a coloring of this bigger graph. <clears throat> okay, so that's the four color theorem. It looks easy. It took a long, long time to be solved. Let's just look at a few other uh, examples of graphs, classes of graphs, where we can understand this. Just erase here. <clears throat> So let's look at the, a tree. A tree is a graph which has no loops. This is an example of a, of a tree. This is an example of a tree. It looks a little bit like a tree. And uh, how many colors do we need for a, to color a tree? Let's just try. Start with the first node here, put number one here. So here we are forced to use a second number, already a second color. Now we can in every, because there are no loops, we can, no triangles especially, we can put uh, number one everywhere here. And you see we can continue like that. Now we can put number two everywhere as a neighbor, number one everywhere as a neighbor, number one, number two, number one, and we see that we have no problem to color this tree with two colors. <clears throat> this is one, this is two. So every tree can be colored with two colors. Let's look at another class of 
Roths. <coughs> Maybe the simplest type of graphs are circular graphs. Just an example. Let's take two. One with five, two, three, four, five, six, and one with six nodes. So these are two graphs. Actually, we can look at the whole thing as one graph, which is disconnected. But let's look at each com component and see how many colors do we need to color this. So here, start with one, two. Here I can re reuse one, two. Here I cannot re reuse one. You see, we have to use a third color. So this circular graph needs, or needs already three colors. While here, if you take one, two, one, two, one, two, here we get through. And you see if it's, this is an example with a circular graph with odd uh, number of vertices, and this is a, a graph, circular graph, with an even number of vertices. Here we need three colors, here we need only two colors. Now you see another, another class which I just can uh, attach to this is called the wheel graph. Put the central point here and connect it to everything. Also here we can do that. How many colors do we need to color this? A wheel graph. Let's look at this. So we have already three colors outside. We cannot do with less. For the central node here, we need definitely a fourth color. We cannot use the three colors outside. And here we have, uh, we can use uh, a third color. So this wheel graph has been colored with three colors, this with four. This is already the maximal number according to the four color theorem. This is an example of a planar graph. <coughs> okay, let's look at another example. Another example of a... Do we ever need more than four colors? So let's take a, a pentagon and connect all the nodes. This is a magical figure, and we have we see that we have we have we have no choice here to use five colors. You can easily see we use here one. We cannot reuse one anywhere else. Here we have to really use all five colors. This is called the complete graph of uh, with five vertices. This is already a four-dimensional object. It's called a four-dimensional simplex. Complete graph. Uh, one calls this K5. So this graph here needs, oh, this graph needs five colors. <coughs>